12th, the executive order the president uh, released today takes a clear step in banning the import of oil, natural gas, and coal. Uh, as you know, uh, fossil fuels are a significant portion of uh, the Russian balance of payments uh, and Russian revenue. Uh, it's an area that Putin relies on extensively. Uh, and it's an area that is consistent with how the president has focused on places where we are in a position where we can operate and effectively execute our economy while taking this into account. Uh, and it will have an impact, an escalating impact, adding to all the steps we've taken uh, to affect uh, uh, the Russian economy. So we, th this is best viewed in the context of a deliberate, coordinated effort to try to increase the economic costs and the economic consequences on Russia for mm. Putin's actions, which I think you're seeing play out in the market for what sure. What about the economic consequences on consumers here in the United States? I know that we hear from Jen Psaki, of course, the press secretary, saying some oil CEOs are indicating they plan to raise their output, but do you need more of that to be able to offset some of the price pressures? Well, I'd separate two things. The first is the impact here in the United States. And as the president was very clear and has been from the get-go, uh, 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 Putin's uh, war of aggression will have costs, and those costs will uh, be in the United States as well. We've seen the price of gas at the pump go up about 75 cents since Putin began amassing uh, troops at the Ukraine border. Uh, and that's a real issue. We're working to mitigate that. Um, at, the, at the same time, if you look at production in the United States, it's at near record highs, record highs for natural gas, and increasing significantly. There's no barrier in the short term to uh, increase production. And as you say, you've seen uh, oil companies indicating that they're increasing production uh, at a rapid clip. And so uh, certainly we expect that uh, to continue. But I think this is also a very stark uh, reminder, if you step back historically, that the only viable path to energy independence for the American economy is to reduce the energy intensity of our economy overall uh, and ultimately to reduce it to zero and get ourselves to a position where we're no longer reliant on fossil fuels. That's a long-term project, uh, but what we're seeing today um, and the geopolitics and the economic pain should only reinforce uh, our efforts to try to move there more quickly. Do you plan to have a meeting, a summit with some of these U.S. oil producers? A lot of the heads of those companies have maybe said that they're surprised that you're asking OPEC Plus to increase output, but haven't, no one has contacted them directly. Well, we're in contact with uh, with uh, members of uh, with companies and CEOs and interacting with them on a on a very regular basis. That will continue. Uh, and look, the American system operates based on supply and demand in the market, and we uh, certainly expect CEOs to respond. And we're seeing that in the market that production uh, increases. That's how the American system works. In in petro states where uh, oil production is controlled by the state, then uh, they operate differently. That's not how uh, the American economy operates. Was there a discussion? here about where you think oil prices could end up as a result of the sanctions and the other uh, actions taken by the U.S. as well as other governments. Look, we have looked in every case when we've looked at economic sanctions at two things. One, how can we partner closely with our allies to make sure that we are operating in a coordinated way, even when individual countries like the United States takes a somewhat different approach because of where we're positioned. We're moving out and the president has prioritized moving in concert with our allies. Right. And the second is to closely analyze the potential impacts and the potential risks. That's, what, that's something that we do for all of our uh, actions. And um, none of these are without some risk and some consequence. Right. But I think if you look at the overall impact, the yeah. Russian economy is reeling as a result of these well, steps, well, and that's the intended goal. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. And let, let me just rephrase it a little bit. I think we know the impact is there. We have all seen uh, where gasoline prices are at the pump. On average, we're at four bucks. In certain parts of this country, you're paying upwards of six to seven bucks. The question here is what's the contingency plan right now within the White House, economically speaking, to blunt the impact of this increase in commodity prices? Well, we're gonna do everything we can to mitigate. There's a couple things we can do right now. The first is continue to work with our allies and partners to use the coordinated, the reserves that we have in a coordinated way. You saw the president bring the IEA together uh, last week to announce a 60 million barrel coordinated release. The US will do 30 million of that. We're actively consulting with our allies and in the IEA context about whether it's appropriate to act and do more uh, with those releases. The second is we gotta pay close attention to this market and make sure that uh, 
uh, even as we see this upward price pressure, we're not seeing anybody taking advantage of consumers. Uh, and so that's the second thing the Federal Trade Commission, the CFTC, uh, will be keeping a, a close eye on. And to the point you raised earlier, working internationally and diplomatically to make sure that there is an adequate global supply on the market, mm -hmm. including uh, from those suppliers who don't have market-based economies. I'm empty, wipe my tongue for no